Hello Leeds United fans, hope you're all doing fantastically well, it's Connor, we're back here uh, discussing, I don't really know, I think I think a season so far, a season so far, it's not been a mass amount of games has it, there's not a lot to judge, um, we've not got a lot of stimulus uh, to be waffling on about for an hour, uh, we will be doing the debrief this week so check in for that one but the international break has maybe come at a time where we can reflect uh, on what has happened so far, the mental transfer window that we've had, and what is going forward for Leeds United. So, straight away when we get back, and this is obviously looking uh, forward for Leeds, Millwall away, you know, in the next four games, we've got Southampton, we've got Watford as well, Watford away from home. So... <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see how Leeds go about this. Because I think, to be honest, everyone, I think so far we've had pretty favourable fixtures. If you look at West Bromwich Albion at home, Cardiff at home, I don't think Birmingham away is as tough as you can get in this division. Sheffield Wednesday at home, obviously. Ipswich, obviously the outlier there, but I think that's definitely been the toughest game. But I think the rest have been they've been all right. They've been kind to Leeds, I think, anyway. You know, Birmingham, you might throw out there and say it's a tough one. It's always been a tough one for Leeds, but definitely winnable with the quality that you saw in that side. So, interestingly, when you look at when you look at setups, maybe those teams are teams that will sit deep against Leeds. I think we've seen that obviously against Salford, definitely against Sheffield Wednesday, and for parts obviously towards the back end of the game against Cardiff City as well. And, and West Brom, really, you know, time-wasting from a very early early point. But I think you're going to get a lot of teams doing that against Leeds, and that's why we've got to figure out a way around it. Watford, Southampton, Millwall even, especially away from home, you're probably expecting teams like that to maybe come at Leeds a little bit more. And that's why we've got to kill them with possession, you know, keep the ball, no mistakes, and just grind them down. Because we see it with other teams, don't we? You know, I saw it with Burnley last year. They go to these tough grounds. And with Leeds, it's naturally going to be bigger because we're a massive club and teams are going to step up the game against us. But overall, it doesn't matter. You know, you saw under Bielsa. I know crowds um, weren't there for the, the season that we went up. And I know that is a big, big external factor. But overall, if we're able to quell that noise and really, really, you know, ignore the noise, if anything and go out there and play our game, we can beat all of these teams, and that's including Southampton. You know, I know a lot of things have changed with Southampton, manager, massive player turnover, but I was watching them against Sunderland, and I think the player turnover maybe has been a little bit too much, but we'll wait and see. You know, we'll wait and see with those, but losing, you know, Nathan Teller, I thought was a big one, a real, real big one. I didn't expect them to lose him, golden boy in the championship last year, and a real, real difference maker there. So, yeah, they brought some talent in, still obviously got um, Ross Ross Wallace, there. Ross Wallace, Ross Stewart's come back, which I think is a really good addition. But a 5 0 loss at the weekend, I don't think it's going to be sort of indicative of their season going forward. Um, I really don't. And the reason behind that is because they've just got too much quality, too much quality. And we see normally in the championship that the quality really does come to the fore. So, yeah, we've all got to bear that in mind. So that's looking forward. And I think Leeds can definitely beat these teams. You know, of course we can. Passing them to death and taking our chances. That's the big thing. I think the problem with Leeds at the minute and maybe the difference between Leeds and teams that have got up in the championship, including ourselves, um, it's not ruthless. And I actually don't think we were as ruthless as we could have been, believe it or not. If I've been hypercritical about Leeds when we went up under Bielsa, you know, Patrick Bamford only getting 16 goals when I think that season Pablo Hernandez created about 2 billion chances. But the differential there is we had Pablo Hernandez. And I think that's where Leeds are going to face a few problems this season. If I'm looking at the season so far and what I've seen, I think, you know, there's a lot of clamour at the minute for Jamie Shackleton. And listen, I want to come on here and address something as well. Like, a lot of people think I've got this hatred for Jamie Shackleton because in the football world, it's made up of very, very sensitive souls who don't understand, weirdly, what criticism is. Constructive criticism in my book as well. And just a, a general opinion. You know, I do not mind Jamie Shackle. And it's so weird that I have to come on and say this, but a narrative is that I just seemingly don't like him. I don't like him in this lead side. And I don't care if he puts in effort. I don't care. That's a bare minimum I expect from every single Leeds player. For me, the balance of the back line is a problem. And Jamie Shackleton is a problem because of the profile of player that he is. You know, a diminutive central midfielder by trade is now being shoved at left back when he doesn't have a left foot. Yeah, he's been putting in effort. 45% of Leeds fans bizarrely gave him 
man of the match in the previous game. But, you know, I've watched a game where Ethan Ampadu at the weekend was by far the best player on the pitch. But because Jamie Shackleton is almost a player in this side who, you know, has, has maybe stepped up his game, which he has from, from seasons previous. He's obviously getting the recognition at the minute, which is great for Jamie, but he's not a profile, a profile I want on that left-hand side. The reason I mention that is because it ties in with the number 10. Leeds, for me, are going to go back in for these profiles in the January transfer window. Now, is that problematic? Probably. Why is that problematic? Well, it's slightly problematic because, they, in my opinion, they're going to suffer a little bit on these sides. Maybe in the Championship, you could get away defensively with having Jamie Shackleton at left-back because the wingers are obviously nowhere near as good as the Premier League, where it's just ruthless. And Jamie Shackleton would be exposed every single week and no way is that a, a, a plan going forward if we were to get to the Premier League. But I think Leeds are, are, are going to struggle in the central midfield area, naturally, because the creativity going forward is now reliant on a rutter. It's now reliant on Joel Perot maybe slotting back and actually acting as a number 10 throughout the season. But I think, you know, you're probably going to see a rutter Perel partnership up top, which is going to aid them both. You know, I think they need a striker next to them to be able to perform up front properly. But overall, I think we are going to struggle in the 10. I really do. I think there's going to be a creative issue um, and a player in this side needs creative license and that's dependent on Daniel, that, you know, that's shown in Daniel Fark systems before. So I think overall that is going to be an issue. And Leeds will dip into that market in January. I'm, I'm, I'm certain of that. But up until then, we're going to find uh, this creative spark maybe a little bit difficult to, to, you know, to galvanise. And I think a lot of it is just going to be by brute force, pace, dynamism from the likes of Jaden Anthony, Nonto, and and Somerville, um, and you know, those guys being able to just almost create moments out wide and, and provide those moments and a striker has got to be clinical. I think in this system, a striker has got to be clinical. You know, especially if we are not playing a, a two up top and we are playing a four, two, three, one, you've got to have that three in behind the striker really, really, really being dynamic in and behind him, whipping these balls in, you know, quick, incisive movements from that deep line place, not essentially being creative, but just creating space and then being able to get shots off. I think that's where we're going to see most of our success like we have so far. We've not got the guile, the innovativeness or the creativity of a number 10, but in, in terms of us just quickly moving the ball with our quick players, I think that's the way Leeds are going to score goals this season. So, these are things that we need to consider. Um, I guess the only pro player in the side with a bit of guile and innovativeness and creativity is probably Jan Paveda. I don't know if he's going to be fully ready for a championship season yet, in my opinion, in terms of just like a full season in that number 10. But maybe that is where Daniel Farker will move it around a little bit. Could we see that in the second half of, of some games? And I think that would be quite nice, actually, to see. I would actually quite like to see that and see how he's going to work with Jaden Anthony. Moves me on to Jaden. For people to be saying that he doesn't start is absolutely batshit crazy. It is batshit crazy. We do not at this moment in time have a settled three in behind the striker. Nowhere near. Um, Jaden Anthony has, mu has as much of a chance as anybody at being the first name on this team sheet. He's done it in the championship before on like the majority of our three in behind the striker. And not only that, he has proven it in the championship before, unlike anybody in our three behind the striker. So there is absolutely no way... Jaden's going to be starting in the cam, but starting out wide, 100%, I'd be starting him next game against Millwall, 100%, definitely. Um, I don't understand, oh, he's going to be rotation, he's never going to be rotation, he's proven it, why is he rotation? How arrogant are we to be looking out at our three and behind the, the centre forward, who really aren't producing on mass right now and saying, oh, he's going to be rotation? Not at all, he has to be starting for me. Um, you know, Bournemouth highly rate him, really, really rate him, set a work in the championship. So we start him. You know, he was Sinisteria's replacement. So if he's Sinisteria's replacement, he goes in. Quality for quality. And that's the reason Leeds embroiled themselves in the deal with Bournemouth and didn't with Everton and other clubs because they weren't getting anything back the other way. You know, so mass to take into consideration there. But the season so far, you know, have I been disappointed? I've the the, the Ipswich game was 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 superb. I have to say, um, and I was so excited. I was so excited when I was seeing that. I was, I was still a little bit apprehensive because I didn't think we were going to see that. I didn't think we were going to see a Leeds United going forward with a Sinistera and Onso, a Somerville all to, together as a collective. 
you know, been fluid, been interchanged. It's because we'd, we'd heard way too much noise. The transfer window overall, I'd give it a maybe a 6.75, 7 out of 10. And I know the bad feelings died down now, but I just think there's too many there's too many things missing, which leads are going to dip into in January. I think a left back was massive. Um, and I will never get on this hype about Jamie Shackleton being the answer. If he's the answer, what's the question? With all respect to Jamie. Um, number 10 is massive. And I do think, as I've said before, we're going to dip into that market. And I think losing Sinister, even though we've got Jaden in, is massive. I think it's massive. And I think you saw that once again at the weekend. You saw it against Salford when we had a strong team out. Uh, Sinistera came on and it changed. You know, you saw at the weekend when there's no real composure in that final third with the Sinistera, how rash and raw and wayward it can be with three 19 to 20 year olds in and behind a striker who's also very young. You know, you need composure, you need a bit of class there. Um, so, yeah, j keep an eye on Jaden this season. I think he's going to be big, a little bit older than the rest as well experience in the championship with a promoted side which is big 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 a lot of Bournemouth fans saying they shouldn't have kept hold of him but uh, they should have kept hold of him I should say but yeah a lot to consider a lot to consider but the season so far has been okay the transfer window has been I mean Leeds sit in what 15th place so it's probably not been okay I mean you know we're talking about Leicester and Southampton losing but they are still at the top end of the table with more wins than Leeds United um, so that's got to be taken into consideration. So Leeds need to step on the ignition as soon as they're back. Gureb's going to be in the side. Kamara has hopefully had time to, you know, develop within this this Leeds United side in terms of, you know, learning people around him and, you know, learning Farker's methods. And when I say learning people around him, I mean learning their methods and all this sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I give it probably a 6.75 for the transfer window. Season so far, I'll probably give... I don't think you can give any more than a 5, 4.55, because I think there's the potential of this season has got to be a lot higher than that. Um, you know, sitting in 15th place isn't ideal, but Leeds have got to, especially with the fixtures we've had, but the fixtures are going to get tougher now. Hopefully teams are going to not just be sitting in against us and are actually going to try and attack us, and that's going to aid Leeds United. So, yeah, so far, everyone, um, yeah, I'd just be interested to hear your ratings. What are your thoughts on the season for, so far in the season going forward? Do you think we'll invest in January in a 10 and a left back? Do you think it's imperative? Are you happy with what you've seen so far? Jaden Anthony, what are your thoughts on him? Does he come in straight away? What needs to change with this Leeds United 11 to really, really profit? Another person who we've not spoken about, Patrick Bamford. Now, listen, I'm not a massive fan of Patrick Bamford, as you guys know, as I'm not with Luke Aylin. I think they're almost past it well they are past it in my opinion Bamford turned 30 yesterday and I think there's no way he's going to get as many games under his belt as, as he did you know even two three years ago this season in the championship hopefully I'm wrong but maybe he is the person who goes in alongside a Perot he's the person who goes alongside a Rutter you know in the championship a division lower is the ball going to bounce off him and you're going to maybe see Perot and Rutter profiting from that because guys if this experiment doesn't work with Rutter and Perot as a partnership you know in the 10 in the 9 or us two strikers together we're gonna have to try it we're gonna have to flux it up it's gonna have to change a little bit and when people come back into the equation fitness wise which you never know with Pat Bamford he could be out for another nine years if he comes back for a game that gets injured again that's always the problem with him it's dependability reliability but if he was to come back and he was to be fit for a significant portion that's that could be big for Leeds in terms of the profile that he is you know ball hitting him could the other striker take to take you know real advantage of him of it and him you know is he going to be the distraction whilst Perot gets away with it a little bit or Rutter gets away with it a little bit it's another option isn't it even if it isn't a dependable option guys really fascinated to let to, to hear what you think you know what happens when Coops comes back does he get in are you happy with Rodon and Strauch I am quite happy with those two I'll be honest even though Rodon I thought was a little bit poor the Strauch slander, I think, is mental. And a lot of people call in for Cresswell. Don't get that whatsoever. However, you know, I think Strauch's had a decent start to the season. Ethan's been player of the season so far by a country mile for me. I want to hear all of your thoughts, everybody. I'll catch you in a bit.